Hi, and welcome to the Tomato Timer, a podcast about learning to learn. I'm Zubair from Xenos, and I'm tuning in live with experts from around the world, asking your questions and hearing their stories. All before the timer goes off. 24 minutes and 39 seconds to go. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 22 of the Tomato Timer. We took a little break. I had to do some exams, and obviously, if you guys are celebrating Eid, it was good to take a little break for that as well. And we're back on today with another amazing guest. Charlotte is joining us today, and she is a digital and technology solutions degree apprentice at BT. She's in her first year. Hi, Charlotte. How are you? Hi, I'm really good. Thank you. How are you? Thank you for uh, having me on. It's amazing to have you. I'm all right, too. Um, just struggling through some last exams, but yeah, it's all good. <laughs> um, Charlotte. Obviously, we've had a couple of guests from the BT program already, but we were having a a discussion just earlier on, and I I really was very interested in your past kind of career, um, in all the things that you were working on from a very young age. So what was your first job that you ever had? So um, my first job was when I was about 14. Um, I worked in the local hairdressers just as a Saturday girl, um, just basically washing people's hair, you know, uh, making tea. Um, and chatting to people and um, it was a really really good first job I was very shy at 14 as I think most people Mm. are and um, just kind of like the idea of talking to adults and making conversation was quite daunting but um, I loved it Um, and it was a great way to really build up my confidence and um, people would say put put yourself out there do things that make you feel a bit uncomfortable Um, yeah. It definitely, I mean, and it did at first, but I mean, I learned so much from it and it really just kind of helped build the foundations of, of that confidence, being able to talk to adults and, and things like that. But yeah, I, I really liked it. Yeah. So that was a really cool um, kind of job. And I think something that we're all sorely missing our hairdressers um, at these times. So you went on from there and you continued doing lots of part-time jobs. What was the next one then? So my next job, um, I think I, so I had a little bit of a gap. So I think I was about 17. So I was in my first year of college um, and mm-hmm. I got a job at River Island um, as a Christmas temp originally. Um, that was very different. Um, you know, working in retail is very different to working in a hairdresser's. Um, mm-hmm. And I guess it's, yeah, it, it's kind of own thing. But um, yeah, so that was what I'd say is my first proper job so my first kind of job where I was on a payroll Um, and again that was completely different Um, it was very high paced Um, there was quite a lot of high pressure and targets to get sales Um, and especially as it was around Christmas time um, there are a lot of targets that we had to meet Um, and actually it went really well and they kept me on um, afterwards and gave me a a permanent part-time role after and being um, a temp, a Christmas temp. But yeah. again, that was something that was very different, getting kind of more of a customer basis, um, having lots of different experiences. Yeah, uh, just like a, a small note to those of us who might not be in the UK. I'm not, I think River Island is a, is a global brand, but it's a, it's a clothing shop, retail place. And your job was in sales and retail, is that correct? Yeah, so... Um, it was kind of, you know, the basics, putting clothes out and making sure everything looked nice and, and tills and things like that. But um, it, there was also quite a big push on sales. So um, see, Christmas is probably like retail's biggest time of the year. So um, Definitely. Uh, we, we were really encouraged to like literally stand at the front of the shop. I know, I guess, especially like for British people, that's something that, you know, I, I mean, I personally, I don't like being approached in a shop, but um, <laughs> we had to go out and approach people and them for help and things like that um, and we also had targets to meet so we had to sell x amount of gift cards um a day per shift um so there was quite a lot of pressure really um especially kind of as a 17 year old and to go up yeah. to adults and say hello you know please buy this basically and um, please buy a gift card and things like that but again that that was another really great role for of, um building up my confidence um and it was nice as well because um, a lot of the staff that worked there were also quite young. So um, it was, ah, okay. yeah. But what was it like feeling, because uh, you've, you mentioned the pressure of the company itself as well, but it's a very different feel when you're working with trying to get customers, right? And working with real people and and sometimes they're nice and sometimes they're not. And how, how does that, like, how does that make you feel and how were you able to manage it? Uh, it was, um, 
It was definitely challenging. I mean, it was great when you got really lovely customers and, and nice people, but course, yeah. I guess on the other side of that, you'd also get quite angry customers, um, people shouting and things like that. Um, yeah, I think that's something that kind of like of all of the jobs I've had over my life. I think something that you just have to get used to. There's always going to be angry people and going to shout at you but you know it's not personal I think sometimes it's just a case of shooting the messenger you know it, it's not my fault if mm. not return something but often people don't really understand that but I mean I think it's something that you know is good even though it's not very nice at, at the time I think it's definitely good in terms of experience because um, I think as well when you were younger you didn't have much experience as time goes on you, you learn not to kind of take it personally and know that really the person isn't angry at you it's you know they're angry at policies and, and things like that but I definitely used to I mean I hate it you know no one like being yeah. shouted at and things like that but um you kind of get on with it and sometimes if someone's being a bit unreasonable you know you'd laugh afterwards and you know you shake it off but yeah mm. Mm, I can imagine it's it's like almost bittersweet you know and there's a lot but at the end of the day it's it's a real world experience and I don't think you can ever um avoid that you'll you'll have to deal with every kind of person in your life whether you like it or not and um it, it's you just need to learn how to manage dealing with people who might not be the most pleasant or the one you want to speak to um and and i think you definitely got that experience when you were working at that sort of role and then you then went on to an even more exciting role um at an amusement park at thor park what were you doing there yeah so um I don't know if you know the guys listening know Thought Park, but it is a theme park. Um, and actually, I worked in the hotel, so not a lot of people know that there is a, a, sh- a hotel at Thought Park. It's the Shark Hotel. Um, so you know, have a little look. That was um, a really, to be fair, that was kind of I, well, I would say my favourite part-time role. Um, it was so diverse. Um, every day was different. You get so many different types of people that come to theme parks, um, yeah. and the job was quite you know, fast high like fast paced there was a lot going on all of the time it wasn't just you know checking people in it was you know fixing tvs and um you know looking after complaints and, and things like that um, and i guess as well because you know, it's quite expensive to stay and come to a theme park and when people were angry it tended to be a lot more escalated yeah. um i think over time from all the different jobs that i've had you, you just kind of get used to it um it was a really great job. Um, I got some perks as well. You know, sometimes I got to go on rides when the park was closed because um, I was working oh, late. But yeah, which was really, really great. Amazing. So now it gets to kind of the, the the real deal of this episode. I wanted to talk to you about the fact that you got into all these jobs. And then not only that, but then you went on to get apprenticeship, not just one, but many offers. And obviously to get into any of these jobs and, and to become an apprentice and, and to kind of be involved with the real world. You've been interviewing for a very long time. You've been having to do different types of in-person and video interviews. And I really wanted to hear more about that because as students, we don't really get a chance to build on those skills at all. Um, We don't know how to present ourselves or share our stories um, unless we are lucky enough to get some sort of internship at some point. But that's, that's where I want to really get down to. So what was it like across all these experiences whichever one made you kind of most whichever you want to draw upon but what were those skills that you had you found and you developed over time to become a really good person who could interview i think there was kind of a couple of factors that that came into it i think um so for example when i applied to bt to to uh, apply to mm. for my apprenticeship um, it was quite a lengthy interview process um, but I think the thing that I was really grateful for was just experience and stuff that came with that experience was knowing the types of questions that were going to be asked of you um, being able to prepare some answers to those questions. Um, and I think just, you know, I've talked about it a bit already, but I think just confidence um, can be very, very daunting, especially if you're in an interview with a lot of people. Um once went to Whoa. an assessment center for the BBC and I'll say there were around a hundred other candidates that I was all up against. Gosh, that's ruthless. Yeah, and probably about five or ten positions. So it was really, really um it was intense. Yeah. Um I think, you know, you just got to be confident in yourself and you've just got to think, well, I've got 
know, I've got to this place for a reason. They, they clearly like me. Um, but yeah, it can be daunting when there's so many people um, you're up against. But I think to relax, and I know everyone says that, and it's really hard to relax. <laughs> Especially um, when someone's <laughs> telling you to relax. Yeah, exactly. You know, that, that often doesn't help. But um, I think being prepared as well is something that is really, really key. Um, like looking online, make sure you research the company. Um, because if you can kind of like just drop in every now and then or facts or things that show that you have done your research, it shows that you're really interested. Yeah. Um, so, for example, BT, I looked at all what their company values were. Um, so simple, personal, brilliant. So I made sure that in my interview, I tried to kind of embody those values and make sure that what I was saying was kind of relating back to and demonstrating that myself as a person, yeah. those values were, I could represent them. So we, we spoke a little bit about this before, but it was, you actually kind of linked the fact that yeah, you you had to get your foot in the door and and get past some of like the kind of the initial interview, uh, initial application questions to even get an interview. And I guess at that stage, academics were an indicator. But when you were sitting in front of a person and being interviewed, it was a lot more about just acad- than just academics. It was about your personality as well. Um, and h- how were you able to kind of, I guess, kind of mold yourself to different organizations or different roles that you were applying to? Yeah, um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, obviously your grades and kind of the key points about you, you know, they help you get to, you know, get to the interview stage. But once you're there, I mean, they want to see what you're like as a person. I mean, you could be the most intelligent person in the world, but if you don't kind of have that personality that the company are looking for behind you, then you're probably not going to get get the role depending on what it is. Mm. Um, so I think it's you know, just be true to who you are. Um, I know that can come across as quite vague, but you know, it's it's seeing if companies seeing if you're right to work for them and, and vice versa. So it's got to be a, a right fit for both parties. Mm. Um, so, you know, um, like I said, kind of researching what companies look for, they all look for different things. They all kind of have different goals and ambitions. So if you kind of make sure that you know what that is, um, then that will give you a really good indication of what they're looking for in a person. Um, BT is kind of like a a personal example, was really looking at people that um, had ambition and that were willing to try hard. So that's why, you know, they kind of weren't as focused on grades. They wanted people that were going to work hard regardless. Um, and I think that was something that really helped me because then I could just show that, I, you know, I'm a passionate person and I want to do well, especially going into a role that I had actually no previous experience in mm. um, academically at all. Um, so I think my ability just to show that you know, I'm ready to learn and I'll, I'll give a go, give anything a go. Yeah, I think that, you know, um, really helped. So you when you were applying... Um... Straight out, straight out of school, you actually apply, applied to different apprenticeship programs, and you told me that not only was it BT, but there were other companies. What were they, and what were the roles that you were looking at at the time? So, um, I applied for British Airways as well to do project management, um, and I was actually successful in that application. I was offered the role, but mm. um, I applied to O2, um, EFL, BBC, um yeah that, that that's all that I can remember off the top of my head but a lot of them and uh, they all seem to follow the same process uh, the application process so um kind of send in your cv or do a type of um questionnaire or answer some questions or something and then I have to do a video interview um and I think that's what a lot of companies are doing now yeah um and they were really, really weird at first. It was very uncomfortable kind of filming yourself and very unnatural. Um, and you've only got a very short amount of time to sell yourself. And uh, some would give you the questions before, so you could kind of prepare. Others would just give you the questions and you just have to do it there and then. And um, I think, again, just practice, practice, practice. And that's what really kind of helped me to feel comfortable um and also kind of get a gauge of what was gonna what kind of questions that they were gonna ask um mm. so, you know companies will also, you know why do you want to do an apprenticeship um you know, what interests you what interests you like uh, why would you be a good fit for the company so depending on kind of whether I got the questions or not I 
I kind of already had an idea of what was going to be asked of me. Um, so that really helped. And then from then on, obviously, it was the assessment centre. So um, that could be, I've been at assessment centres, like I said, at BBC for like 100 people. Yeah. And then I've also been assessment centres where there's been, I don't know, like three people. Um, but they all are really, really interesting. And it's just constantly kind of being watched and tested all day. Um, and I think, you know, if you do want to go down the apprenticeship route, I definitely think you're going to have to get familiar with this process. Um, there are some great kind of tools online uh, to help you have a go at this. Um, yeah, they're they're all pretty dissimilar. Yeah, I, I didn't want to stop because the, the it was just so much useful information. But I wanted to just drill down a bit more on the video interview. What were what was this something specific? Especially because with this situation of the world right now, we're going to be probably, if not like completely shifting to a video interview system for not just internships and apprenticeships, but even jobs. Uh, what was, what was the, is there anything specific like you could share with us or a uh, kind of a tip or a trick that you realized over doing so many different interviews, especially through kind of video conferencing tools and that you could, yeah. What, is there anything yeah. specific? So um, I definitely say research the company. Um, so most companies will have their values or their goals. Um, and in these video interviews, they're looking out to make sure that you have kind of done your research on, on the company and you can mm -hmm. get caught out if you haven't. Um, so, for example, what I used to do was I literally just used to write down the values or the company's kind of main goals and stick on a post-it note and have it in front of me um, and kind of almost write out a rough guide um, of things that I can mention that are kind of going to make me look good yeah. um, to the company. Um, they're always probably asked why you want to do an apprenticeship um, or like why you want to go for that specific role and what interests you. So um, for those kind of questions, it is really good to um, talk about and try and sell yourself as well and just be honest because as well, they want to don't want to you don't want to be a robot you want to get over that you're a person yeah. um so that i kind of use those just to kind of show my personality and sometimes you get asked questions like as simple as what interests you and i know for a lot of people and especially for me I, that always kind of stumped me i was like oh well then no, i don't i don't know what to tell these people but that is a really good way just to have a think and sit down because you're always going to get asked that type of question think, yeah yeah like kind of what what do you do that represents you as a person and I guess showing maybe 10 seconds or 30 seconds what you do it can be difficult and they are high pressured but I think the main tip is to prepare yeah. um, have some answers that you can put down before just so you can fall back on those in case because if you don't have another chance to film it then you know that could be it that could be a chance over but if you prepared then you know there's no reason why you can't do amazingly the uh, uh, video interview Amazing. Actually, that's very, very important. Not just a skill, but like a, a a skill that's not just required for video interview. I mean, I mean, it's it's required for everything. Preparing, preparedness, and you can easily see when you're speaking to someone whether someone is actually taking the time to read around and research or not. And I guess you found that that's been one of the most important things that's helped drive you forward. Yeah, yeah definitely. Now, at school, you studied what for A levels? So I studied uh, geography, English language, and film studies, which is completely different to <laughs> what I do now. <laughs> yeah. So how did that happen? Where did you end up getting into tech? And was was it ever scary to to kind of like take a huge kind of shift from what you were studying or what you were good at? Uh, absolutely. Um, I was kind of terrified before I started, kind of like when I knew I got the role, I was so worried because I just thought, oh, well, I've, I've got no kind of academic experience, but mm. I had absolutely nothing at all to be worried about. Um, I think at school, I kind of put myself in a box. You know, there's only so many subjects that you get taught at school. And I think sometimes when you're coming out, it can be really difficult to know what you want to do because the difference is massive in the real world so many different types of jobs and already kind of in six months of working in a company most of the roles that I've had a go at doing I didn't even know existed um, <laughs> so yeah it, it can be really hard to kind of know what what you want to do and I think when I came out of school I was like well 
like geography, you know, I like film. So I've, I've got to do something to do with that. Um, and I definitely was close minded. But, you know, when I came out, I decided, right, I don't want to go to university. That's that's not for me. So I just started applying to loads of different roles and just kind of thinking, you know, well, I, I could be good at that. And the beauty is about apprenticeships is if you don't, you know, if you can't already do something, then they're perfect because they're to train you up um so I was just kind of like reading briefs of you know applied to project management and all the sorts of different roles and thinking yeah I could have a go at that and um when I finally got the job kind of a technical job at BT I was like god what have I got myself (laughs) in for um but you know it's it's amazing what the human brain can do and you really can learn anything I know it sounds really cheesy Um, But it is so true. I mean, I failed computer science at GCSEs and now I'm doing it to a degree level. Um, So, yeah, exactly. So just don't limit yourself, um, which I did. And I'm so glad that I kind of got over that because I don't think I'd be here now. Wow, that that is truly inspirational. Like, gosh, (laughs) not just to like, not just picking up another subject, but literally doing it for a whole degree. Was it ever, was it ever... um, kind of when you got out of school was it always like you wanted to go down that apprenticeship route were you certain about it did you ever have doubts about it yeah so um I think what was really hard was when I came out of my A-levels all of my friends I think apart from one or two people went straight into university um and I remember just kind of thinking oh my gosh they're all doing their degrees they're getting on with their lives and I'm not sure what to do and I always kind of knew that I wanted to do an apprenticeship. I mean, it's kind of the route that my dad took and a lot of my family took. Mm. I mean, it always just really, really appealed to me. Um, I'm definitely someone that kind of just always wanted to get stuck in. I mean, had a job since I was 14, so I've always yeah. just wanted to get into the world of work and start my career. Um, but there were times when I was kind of a bit lost, but I'm so glad that I just held back and just, you know, gave everything a go, applied to different things and, and tried it out um, because... Uh, I, I never would have done it, but I'm I'm so glad that I stuck with it. I mean, I got lots of um, rejections from lots of different companies, and you know, as time goes on, you just kind of get used to it. You can't take it personally. Um, and yeah, so I just kind of kept on going, and when I kind of decided, no, I really want to do an apprenticeship, I stuck with it and just kept on applying and applying. I mean, it took me a year and a half, two years, but um, I stuck with it, and I'm so glad that I did because. Um, yeah I'm really loving my apprenticeship now and um, yeah it's it's great that's just so amazing to hear Um, and so amazing to hear that you're happy with the decision that you took Um, sometimes we decide we want something and then halfway through we realize oh man I wasn't (laughs) meant to be here Um, now one of the things that you mentioned in your bio was that you were involved recently in a roundtable discussion at BT for International Women's Day what was that like and what were the topics that you that were discussed and your perspective that you shared there? Yeah, um, so I was asked, I don't even know why I was asked, but I'm very grateful that I was, um, to be part of a roundtable with three female directors that work at BT. And this was filmed for LinkedIn um, and for International Women's Day. Um, and we got to talk about topics such as, you know, um, what issues do women face in the per- workplace? Kind of why is there a lack of females in STEM careers and things like that? And it was really inspiring to be able to talk to you know kind of really high powered women um in the company uh, especially in technology and that kind of industry because it is still very you know male dominated so it was really mm. great to see some like really powerful and you know, badass women um <laughs> and, yeah and and talk about that and the thing that i really loved as well is that you know it's not shying away and trying to pretend that oh no you know it, it is equal and yeah there's the same amount of men and, and women in this company but I really like how it just kind of tackles the issue heads on and saying like no there is not enough women in this kind of area and it needs to change and I think the more that we talk about it the more it will show you know girls that yeah you, you can do anything and it's actually a really really great and interesting industry to be in. Absolutely we uh, and there's no doubt about it that we need more and more role models in our in in, not just in tech but in across every industry and across every role representing not just the different genders but different nationality races all all, in terms of everything you know diversity is is such a key key thing that's going to be kind of governing how the world will look like tomorrow because we all bring such a different perspective to 
to the role we, we bring such a different you know it's, it's a different flavor a different set of talents and skills um and it's so important and at that point um that beautiful uh, message that you shared with us we are exactly at 25 minutes so that's our pond it was so good to have you charlotte thank you so much for having me i can't believe how quickly it went but it was an absolute pleasure (laughs) it does fly thank you so much for listening to our listeners and we will be back again soon but for now bye bye and that's another episode of the tomato timer if you'd like to ask your questions and join us live next week join the xenos discord server the invite link is in the description And to learn more about Xenos and how a bunch of students are on a mission of making quality education accessible to all, go to xenos.org. Bye for now.